My name is Kylie Mason. Uh, I'm the Chief Operations Officer here at Sebago Technics. Uh, and with me, you know, I have the benefit of being surrounded by over a hundred really talented professionals. And what we do is create change in our communities by evaluating land, identifying opportunities, and shaping it to create new spaces for people. What makes us unique is that we can take a client's projects, whatever their aspirations, their vision, their goals are for the project, we can provide all the services they need to get that project designed, permitted, approved, and constructed. We have the ability to put an entire team from surveyors to technicians to 3D modelers, all the way to engineers, landscape architects, and even permitters to help get their visions to become reality. I like to say you know, that what we do is we help uh, capture today and then we create the tomorrow for our clients. A typical day at Sebago is very dynamic. Uh, you're working on five or six different types of projects with three or four different disciplines across the building. So there's a, a lot of collaboration, a lot of energy, and a lot of on-the-run thinking. You could start me meeting on a site, you could start meeting with a client, you could be digging into a due diligence analysis, um, you could be meeting with a team about the potential of a site. What we're ending up with is they changed the building, they made it smaller and changed the materials on it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is kind of reworking their um, service bay. And then this is down in here tied to that signal status. So you're getting a much better platoon in that direction. The culture at Sebago Technics breeds problem solving. It's what we do. And everybody here is a high performing professional that really cares about the work that they're doing. So having the ability to sit down around a table with people that want to solve problems, bringing them together to have a common voice as we move through the process really gives us the opportunity to create amazing things. I'll give you an example of how we collaborate. Um, our surveying team is out in the field gathering information while the engineering team needs to use that information that's collected in the field in order to design our projects. So we'll do the air, we'll do the LiDAR, we have the photogrammetry from the last time with our the, uh, 45 megapixel camera so we got enough detail that we need for any of this stuff. We'll get under the tree cover, uh, get this and then we can get back and give it back to Kira and Rich and they can go to town on it. Cool. That works. works for us. Okay. And it's really important that that step in collaboration happens um, and everything is coordinated properly in order to deliver a quality product that we can be proud of. Should we be calling out the demo layers here on this plan? Or do um, you want to do that on the 20 scale site this, this should probably be in the legend at a minimum. Do like a stone patio hatch. Like pavers? Yeah. Okay. Do we have a detail for those um, areas? We, we need to check that. But it, it'll go to the property line on all three sides. Does that work for what you guys need for modeling? It looks like you want to still be on the line. Okay, because I think you still have in the model from the first scan the riverbed anyways, but we'll get a couple more shots there too, just in case. A day at Sebago Technics is, is full of collaboration and teamwork. Um, and the, the number of folks uh, that interact with one another on a daily basis uh, in the projects that we do uh, really generates a lot of enthusiasm and excitement uh, and just really a, a, a great product um, and a sense of family at the end of the day. The reason we're really good at it uh, is we all know we have something to offer a project and a piece of land and none of us are telling the other one what to do with that knowledge and that impact. We just arrive and we move together towards towards an outcome on a project, which makes collaboration really easy because you're working with a group of people you trust and all of those opinions matter and it forms what we do with it. If, if somebody uses the word inspector, right off the bat, everybody thinks of an inspector as the person who is on the job site and if you do something wrong, the inspector may catch you. That's not what an inspector is, okay? Um, yes, there is a piece of you that you're maintaining the quality control of the project. But the big picture is you're part of the team. Now that works on site, 
and it works off-site too. In other words, my lifeline, if I need to, is to go back to the office staff, to the engineers. If I see something in the field that I figure, what, what's wrong with this? Or could we do this better? Um, or is there a better component for this? Then I can pick up the phone, call everybody at the office and say, hey, I got this going on. What do you think about it? Excuse me. Gotta take it. Hello? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm okay here, and, and I saw this morning that uh, we're well advertised on the TV stations as far as the Exit 7 shutdown is concerned. What I always want people to know about Sebago Technics is that our employee owners are really what make this company work. Um, other companies have talented individuals. They have individuals uh, with experience and great relationships. But we have a team that cares about the success of each other, the success of them individually, and the success of our company. And that combination is really uh, quite unbeatable in our, in our opinion. Anybody could be evaluated for technical knowledge, but there's something more to being a member of the Spago Technics team. And that is that, that thing that's inside you that wants to contribute, that wants to shape, that wants to create spaces and places for people. And you find that um, sitting in a room with our team members or our future team members and letting that, that collaboration that we've talked about happen in that very first interview. Asking them a question about a piece of land to see how they're gonna work through it. You know, if they're arriving with curiosity and interest or if they're arriving with uh, the fight to be right. Fight to be right is really challenging. Uh, collaboration is really curious and really honest and open and it allows us to be a little bit more vulnerable with each other and so seeing that vulnerability in a future team member um, allows us to know this this might be one of our people and boy every time we make a change every person that comes um, we get just a little bit better. I started at Tobago as an intern and then I was hired full-time after I graduated and Tobago has for me just been such a great learning environment. I have been given all the tools that I need to succeed here. I enjoy what I do. When I signed on, I said to him, I have spent a lot of time in an office. I want to be outside and I think I got the skill set to work outside. And that's how this all got started. So even though you're filming me in an office here, you're filming me in an office in the middle of the largest construction project that's going on probably in southern Maine right now. We've been an employee-owned company for a very long time and it breeds an ownership culture here at Sebago Technics. It, it drives a responsibility to your clients and to your peers. You're constantly challenging yourself the way that an owner of a company would challenge themselves to be the best. And you're thinking about what time are we going to get down to actually physically? We're going to, to pull the, the boxes down, start putting the boxes down just as, as soon as as soon as we got the traffic shut off. What I can tell you that you might not know about Sebago Technics is that we arrive every day with the opportunity to make the world just a little bit better, and so there's a different motivation in that than just arriving at a job. Um, we have such a wide range of projects here at Sebago, from municipal to educational to medical. And, and that makes a huge impact on people's lives. I'm changing this, mm -hmm. and I need to figure out what, the, about what space I really want for display. If you do move it back here, just keep yourself parallel so that things hit tangent with the building. What if this is the radius, though? So what if it's 37? Okay, yeah. There really isn't anything cooler than walking or down the street or in the city or, or out in the world and recognizing one of your projects and seeing people use it. Those elements sit with you with every kind of project that you're doing here and focusing on the experience that the end user, which is the general public in most cases, are going to have on your site. It drives you to produce your best work. There's something really powerful about creating spaces for people and seeing them used. The idea that an individual can shape 
our community in that way is pretty powerful. And the moment that hits you in the middle of drawing a plan is life-changing.